Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to two of my newest members, Erhan Kum and I Love Adinda. Thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Members are given shout outs in my videos. To become a member, you can just click the join button. All right, let's get started. So we're going to be solving this nice polynomial equation today. We have the quantity 1 plus x squared times the quantity 1 plus x to the fourth power equals 4 times x to the third power. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So the first method involves distributing everything. Let's go ahead and do that. We get 1 plus x to the fourth power plus x squared plus x to the sixth power equals 4x to the third power. I know this may not look special or what is the big deal about this. The trick here is to put everything on the same side and obviously this equation has a six degree so it's not solvable by any formulas but we're going to use some algebra here. So let's put everything on the same side and rearrange the terms so we can write it as x to the sixth power plus x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus x squared plus 1 equals 0. Great. Now, this equation has 6 degree. I'm going to arrange this uh, terms, arrange these terms, so that I can use some perfect squares. In other words, I'm going to be completing the square. For that purpose, and the reason why I think about per completing the square is because I do have x to the 6, and then I have x to the 3rd. So I can hopefully make something out of that. And to complete the square, I'm going to separate 2x cubed here. And in order to make this perfect square, I need to add 1. So this becomes a perfect square. x to the 6th power minus 2x to the 3rd power plus 1. Great. Now what do we have left? We have x to the 4th power left. But at the same time, we also have a negative 2x cubed. So that doesn't look like a perfect square, but let's see what happens if I write everything else. And since I don't really have any constants, the only thing I have left is x squared. So I can write it like this. Now notice that x to the 6 minus 2x cubed plus 1, as I said earlier, is a perfect square and can be written as x cubed minus 1 quantity squared. Great. What about the, the rest? Well, the rest is also perfect square. If you see it, it's good. If you don't see it, we can also write it in a different way. We can first of all take out the x squared. When we do, we get x squared minus 2x plus 1. This should show you that that's indeed a perfect square, but kind of like a product of two perfect squares. Or you could write it directly as x squared minus x squared as well. If you see what that looks like, then you could write that too. Okay. But in this case, I have the x squared multiplied by x minus 1 quantity squared, which is going to turn out to be the same thing. Now, at this point, I mean, I don't really have to distribute the x squared. I can just uh, try to solve this equation. Uh, what am I supposed to be looking at? Well, x squared times x minus 1 squared is a perfect square. x cubed minus 1 squared is another perfect square. So we're adding two squares, and the result is 0. So what happens if a squared plus b squared is 0, and a and b are real numbers? Obviously, uh, none of them can be negative, and I think we kind of looked at this idea recently. When you have the sum of squares equals 0, then you can safely say that a and b are both 0, if, of course, they are real numbers. So in this case, we get the following result. x cubed minus 1 squared, which means x cubed minus 1, is equal to 0, and x squared times x minus 1 squared is equal to 0. I could probably write it with square as well to keep it kind of consistent. Now, this means that x cubed minus 1 is equal to 0, and obviously this is factorable, but notice that this only has one real solution because the other solution is going to give you the cube roots of the complex cube roots of 1. So that's another story. But from here we get x equals 1 as a real value. The other equation gives us two solutions. x is either 0 or x is equal to 1. But since we have the AND operator, this just means that the outcome from here is just going to be x equals 1. So we get one solution from here and that is x equals 1. 
It's like kind of interesting, right? Okay, great. So x equals 1 is going to satisfy this equation. That's the only solution. Looks like it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And let's see what that gives us. And by the way, if you are looking for complex solutions to this equation, you could definitely go for that. But let's go ahead and look at the second method. The second method is obviously different approach. Let me rewrite my original equation. Now notice that we can divide both sides by x cube, right? But we can do it in a special way such that uh, we can simplify the right hand side so that becomes a constant but at the same time left hand side can also be in, can also be written in a nicer way. So here is how, how we can do it. Uh, I can just uh, divide the 1 plus x squared by x and 1 plus x to the fourth by x squared. And since x times x squared is equal to x cubed, that is equivalent to dividing my x cubed. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. In other words, uh, we wrote the 1 over x cubed, or we, we wrote this as 1 over x cubed multiplied by that expression, and then we did separated the 1 over x cubed into 1 over x and times 1 over x squared. That's what we did. And that gave us 4 on the right-hand side, but also gave us something nice on the left-hand side, because if you look at this expression and this expression, we can separate them, right? x squared divided by x is x plus 1 over x. Great. That's cool. And then this gives us x squared plus 1 over x squared. Okay. Great. Now, obviously, x squared plus 1 over x squared can be written as x plus 1 over x squared minus 2 times x times 1 over x, but it's just 2, and we can write it like this. Now, this calls for substitution, obviously, right? So we're going to call this u, or y, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it y, okay. y times y squared minus 2 is equal to 4. And from here, I do get a cubic equation. That's kind of like a nice cubic, though. It's solvable. y cubed minus 2y is equal to 4. Remember, the first method gave us an integer solution, so this should also give us an integer solution. And if you kind of think about what integer would work for this, you're looking at divisors of 4. And you don't really have a lot of possibilities. And uh, if you just go ahead and test it, you're going to notice that uh, y equals 2 is a solution. And it's probably easier to see if you write your equation like this. Then you can plug it in on both sides. and You'll notice that y equals 2 actually works. Great. So now, since y equals 2 is a valid solution, I can go back and find the x value, obviously. But let's go ahead and um, arrange these terms in such a way that you know, we can just factor, um, we can just factor this expression so that y equals 2 is a solution. And I can basically do this uh, by writing this as y cubed, you know. Okay, so I can just, how am I going to do this? Okay, I can write it as y cubed minus 2y squared, obviously, and that is going to give me um, y minus 2 as a factor. And then I can do plus 2y squared. And then, of course, I do want 4y, right? And then I do just need a 2y and then minus 4 is equal to 0. Okay, this takes care of everything because now I do have y minus 2 as a factor. y squared times y minus 2, 2y times y minus 2, and then 2 times y minus 2 is equal to 0. And if, if you factor out y minus 2 here, you're going to notice that you get y squared plus 2y plus 2. And obviously, this equation has no real solutions. This one is the one with real solutions. And from here, we get y equals 2. Now, going back to our substitution, x plus 1 over x is equal to y. So this should equal x plus 1 over x. And from here, we get x squared plus 1 equals 2x. And that gives us x minus 1 quantity squared. And notice that this gives us only one solution not two solutions. Now what happens if you go, go off of the other y values, set it equal to x plus 1 over x, then you can look for the complex solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.